um, well, um, capital isn't working, is it? And uh, the city isn't working, London isn't working. I'm giving this video abstract a, a day after the Mayor of London has decided that we should have a, a formal investigation of transnational flows of capital into the city and the kind of distorting impact that that has had on the uh, London housing market. In the background, there's massive anxiety about gentrification, about social inequality, uh, analyses of the riots and the kind of social divisions that underpin that I think are still uh, uh, relevant and within all of that the question of the estab establishment uh, political elites and in the case of this particular paper wealth elites uh, remain very much at the forefront of political debate about uh, where the city is going who the city is for and how capital is in a sense captured the city in the broadest possible sense. That's what really the paper is trying to do here. It's trying to develop the idea of a plutocracy, the sense in which um, the powerful, the wealthy have captured the political system and, and trying to sort of urbanise some of those arguments and say, well, what's really going on here in terms of uh, uh, wealth elites, money power? How has that captured uh, the city in a much broader sense? How has money uh, transformed the, the built environment, um, the symbolic uh, qualities of the city? So the, the skyline of the city has changed dramatically such that people, particularly on low and middle incomes, you know, can literally see that money power, the raw power of that uh, uh, influence through uh, buildings like the Shard, through One Hyde Park, uh, through uh, the construction of Nine Elms and Battersea Power Station. And, you know, any sense of the city as a, as a place of dereliction has been completely uh, supplanted now. This is, London is the, you know, as we all know, is the prime, uh, one of the prime destinations of uh, international flows of capital. And that's changed the city uh, uh, profoundly. It's also um, had a massive influence on the way that uh, political elites have sort of positioned themselves and positioned the city as a site of um, capital accumulation, as a place that is open for business uh, with, with the wealthy, either in terms of the purchase of homes, uh, the massive um, asymmetry of the, of the British economy in terms of the, the, the scale of financial services, uh, and the way that, that fits in with a much broader in, in, uh, uh, global economy and the way that London sort of brings uh, 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 money in through those kind of mechanisms. And of course, you know, no one wants to touch that. No one wants no, that, that sort of um, the position of the city of London in that sense is unassailable. Uh, no one wants to do anything that's going to touch the, the kind of revenues that come in that way. So um, this paper is essentially an attempt to sort of grapple with those issues, to extend uh, notions of an elite beyond a kind of just a, a pure sociological framing and to sort of urbanize and spatialize those debates and look at well what's happening in London who has benefited from that and how do how does that system operate uh, consciously or otherwise you know over strategies or just the sort of tacit uh, modes of policy making that are supportive of those kind of changes so with, with uh, uh, Simon Parker, Roger Burrows, and myself, Roland Atkinson, we've uh, uh, written this paper, and I think you know we've tried to produce something that's very accessible, uh, very much of the moment, and um, I think you know we're not going to see those debates go away uh, anytime soon. Um, so we hope you enjoy the paper, and um, hopefully you'll take a, a longer read.